Hey, what's happening, guys? Hey, I wanted to cover the uh, air brakes on the FLU 419. This is in 1989. It's been uh, sitting here a while. Uh, the air brakes weren't building up pressure. So uh, I decided to get down there and dig around. Uh, first of all, uh, the air brake assembly uh, was located right down in here. And uh, I'm going to make you hip to a few things here. First of all, this hose right here. I don't know if we can see inside there. Wish I had some more light. Uh, that hose looks pretty clear. I believe that's the one that comes from the engine. This particular hose, right back in here, if I can get a shot of that. She's uh, pretty much full of crud there. So I'm going to have to clean out those connectors. That connector and the connector right behind it here. I, can, I don't know if I can get that off easily. But anyway, the uh, second coupling behind there is all full of crud, too. A um, couple things taking off the bolts here. As you can see, this one just snapped right off. So you probably need to uh, go ahead and make sure you have some extra bolts ready. Uh, these guys right here were rusted uh, pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and get some new Allens. Um, one of them was stripped out on the inside, and I had to... Uh, Pretty much take a pair of channel locks on the outside to get that off. You can see the water penetration goes all the way down into the threads. This gasket might be able to save it. I don't know. It's got a little bit of cracking in it. It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, and pardon the mess in the garage here. But I'll take you to the, uh, to the actual brake assembly. Try and point you up so you don't have to see all the stuff I haven't put away. Anyway, here's the beast, and uh, you look down in there, I'm not sure if you can catch that, but there's a lot of buildup and junk and all that stuff. Uh, this guy right here, you can see they're just pretty much, uh, I mean, look at that. So I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, dump these in a carb cleaner bath uh, to try and clean them out or if I want to take them apart. My concern about disassembling them all is I remember reading in the technical manual um, that there's certain parts in here that if you take them out that you must uh, replace them. The other thing, this right here is where the alcohol reservoir goes on top. Uh, on my particular FLU 419, there's a hose that comes down and connects to here. And it went up to this plastic assembly that had a crack in it. So I had devised a hillbilly way to replace that. But I'll let you know, when I took this thread out, this entire area was caked with probably a quarter inch of rust flakes. I mean, it was just completely packed in there. So uh, I'm going to take this apart what I can. I'll try and take some pictures so I can post them. And, uh, yeah, you can just see that down in there. That It's all that gook. So I'll see what I can do, and uh, I'll try and share as much as I can so my pain can help somebody else. Anyway, peace. Hey, guys, back again with the FLU 419. Hey, I want to share with you guys, I'm not real hip for uh, Harbor Freight Tools, uh, but on a budget, uh, impact sockets are very expensive. Uh, picked these up from uh, Harbor Freight. I think they were on sale for 24 or 30 bucks, something like that. For working on the FLU 419, uh, almost everything on there is metric, and these guys are invaluable. And for example, I'll show you here. We've got this uh, air brake assembly here, and as you can see, this guy is completely corroded down inside there. <clears throat> so much so, I was trying to take a nail uh, that I had bent at a 90 degree angle, and I was trying to basically pull this stuff out of here, it broke the end of the nail off. <laughs> I mean, that's, I wish I could autofocus there because, I mean, you can just see a tunnel down in there. Anyway, trying to get this guy off, these are big guys. These are like 27 millimeter. So um, if you're trying to work on an FLU 419, I would highly, highly, highly recommend um, some good impact sockets, uh, deep well, is pretty much required for this stuff. Uh, good set of big wrenches, uh, crescent wrenches, um, Allens. There's all sorts of weird stuff you'll encounter on this. 
Uh, some stuff on the FLU 419 is so big that uh, I can't really find tools for it. Uh, so sometimes you have to weld and make your own tools. Like, uh, for example, the uh, draining the transmission fluid, I could not find anything big enough to fit up in there. <clears throat> so I had to take a bolt whose nut would fit up in the hole of the, uh, of the transmission case uh, nut. And once I got that bolt head to fit up in there, then I went ahead and took a bunch of nuts and welded them all together. And then I used that to uh, to put another tool on so I could loosen, loosen it up. So anyway, I'll post some more pictures. Peace. Yeah, let's take a look. Yeah. Little, just a little bit of crud and corrosion down in there. Holy cow. <laughs> that is absolutely ridiculous. Let me see if I can find something to fit down in there. Look at this. And then I wondered why the air brakes weren't getting any pressure, so I'd probably say... This is why. Man, it's just, that's hard, hard, hard. I mean, that's some hard stuff down in there. And if we look down in here, we can just, I mean, it's just unbelievably hard. I wish this guy would focus on that area. Oh, there we go. We can just see how hard this is. So yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna have quite a bit of cleaning here. Anyway, peace. Hey, what's happening, guys? Hey, I wanted to cover this real quick. This nut right here is a uh, 27. Goes in here, and this guy right here is a 24 millimeter. And I had to use the impact to get almost all these off. Let's see if we can focus on that guy. Yeah, doesn't look too bad inside there. I think maybe after we get the one part cleaned out. Yeah, it doesn't look too good. That doesn't look too bad down in there. We'll get it all cleaned out. See how she looks. Seventeen millimeter here. Ten millimeter. I believe this guy spring loaded. Yeah, I almost.
almost guarantee you it's spring loaded. Trying to hold the camera and do this is a little difficult. care for this spring loaded stuff. I'll try something a little different here. Alright guys, she was uh, definitely spring loaded here. You can see down in here. Try and gently pop this guy out of the vise. Yeah, she had a pretty pretty big spring on there. As you can see the uh, I'm going to flip this right side up. The boss symbol goes with that opening right there. We'll try and pop this guy out of here. Alrighty guys, hey, I figured I'd share this one because it's pretty important. Uh, this little mechanism right here is a spring under it, and it's under a lot of pressure. I mean a lot. So when you take that uh, circlip out of here, it uh, shot off, bounced off the ceiling, and went, I don't know, back down behind the bench. And I still have no clue where that circlip went, so... <laughs> Hopefully I will stumble across it here in the next couple days or weeks. It could be anywhere in the barn because it flew off here with tremendous force. So anyway, I uh, wanted to share that. So peace. And uh, one other thing, this guy was kind of wiggling around, but he pulls up out of here. Uh, takes a little bit of coaxing and force to get it out of there. As you can see down inside there, it's not too bad. Uh, but we'll definitely have to clean all that out. Uh, looks like a lot of water down in there. Right, guys, the other thing I found is this little area right down inside here. I'm going to point at it. Right down there. If you look on the other side, there's a diaphragm. And if you very, very carefully wiggle that, just slowly pushing it out, you'll notice that the diaphragm on the other side will move and eventually it will come out and then that should free up pretty much the entire body for cleaning hopefully whoops there it went that frees it all up and then hopefully I can get down here and get all that cleaned out put in a carb bath and I was just worried about putting it in a carb carb bath with this diaphragm in there uh, I'd rather clean that manually because uh, it just uh, kind of brought me some concern there. Anyway, peace. Hey guys, I got to show you this. <laughs> this area right here, it had so much corrosion down inside of it that I actually thought that there was another nut uh, down inside here threaded in. Um, but I took a little screwdriver and started hammering away, and then all of a sudden I saw this spring. And this whole thing popped out. And there is all that corrosion down there. So this thing sat in a, uh, in a uh, carburetor bath for probably about an hour. And uh, stuff still wasn't breaking free. So I had used a uh, 
Look at this. I used a uh, PB blaster, and this stuff was literally caked on so much that I actually thought that there was another inner nut down in here. So I'm going to try and pull all this stuff out, you get all this cleaned out, and we'll move on from here. But I wanted to show that to you guys. Hey, what's happening, guys? Hey, I wanted to show you this. This is where that uh, spring-loaded circlip was, where the, uh, I guess, the uh, this nozzle was located on top here with that big spring in it. So I took this out, and initially it didn't look like this would come out. But I kept looking inside thinking, okay, well, what about this mesh? Because this mesh doesn't look that bad right there. But when I come over here in this opening, if you look down inside there you see a whole bunch of gook there to your right and it was actually all built up and I was able to push on it with a screwdriver so I was trying to figure out how to get this thing out of here and what I did was I just took it and kept slapping it down here completely flat and this ring popped right out and once I get the ring out you'll see the the mesh down in here so if I try and pull this guy out let me see if I can get that out. Uh, he's stuck in there pretty good. So anyway, this looks like some type of filter mechanism. Almost looks like a whole bunch of wool wound together or something. This guy, he doesn't look that bad at all. I'm trying to get that guy out of there. Yeah, so as you see that, that doesn't look that bad at all. This guy, on the other hand, he is just completely corroded. So I'm going to try and get that out of there, see if we can get that cleaned out. Alrighty, guys, here's the air regulator for the Unimog. Uh, finally cleaned out. Uh, there's a little bit of stuff left in there. I'll probably just get with my finger. Um... Gave this a carb bath for over an hour and uh, sprayed it with uh, brake cleaner as well as brushes down in there trying to get all the gook out. This guy was horrific. I mean, it was bad, 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 bad. So hopefully, i uh, get this guy reassembled and uh, that should do it. Uh, earlier, I had spoke about uh, this filter that's in here. It's, this almost looks like... Uh, almost like steel wire and uh, obviously it was some kind of filter to catch stuff going in and if you look at this area right here right down in here you can see like this little lip and that little lip and that little lip on the inner cylinder is designed to hold something inside there um, so as a filter I was thinking about using um, I can't even find it now, but I've got these little pads. They're used for uh, paint removal. I think I might have one over here. I'm not sure. Anyway, they're used for paint removal, so I'm going to cut one of those to size and put that down in there because, and they're a synthetic material because considering that it's a uh, it's a system that's bound to get water in there, I can't see putting uh, steel mesh down in there and ending up with with this again because this is that's bad 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 so anyway show it to you reassemble all righty guys uh, we're back with the air filter unit from the uh, unimog as you can see here i've got a filter uh, back down in here which is kind of similar uh, to what they had in here to begin with uh, but this one is not made of steel it's sort of a uh, synthetic stuff i bought this i don't know what brand name it is it's used for uh, like removing paint but it's uh, porous enough uh, to let this to kind of perform the way the old one did uh, should work good as a filter so we got that guy in there and uh, i don't even know where my other piece went to here this workbench is such a mess but oh there it is and then we'll put this guy back in here 
and there we go so that uh that looks pretty good so i think she'll perform the same way it used to and it looks uh looks a lot better down in there i'll tell you that because before it was just all corroded with rust and all that stuff so anyway there it is air regulator for the uh 1989 unimog hey guys we're on the reassembly now <clears throat> this particular diaphragm when i cleaned the end of this off right up in there it felt like there used to be grease on there uh, so i took a little bit of grease and just kind of lubed it up um, so since it felt like it used to be there i figured i'd put it back And I put this guy back in here. Um, lube the outside surface of this with some uh, saliva. It seems to be a good lubricator. Um, I was scared to use anything on this rubber because I didn't want to damage it. So if you take your index finger and just slowly push all the way around while pivoting this, you can go ahead and reseat this diaphragm in there the same way it was when you took it out. Uh, you're not going to get it by just simply pushing it down in there. you got to run your your fingertip around to get it smooth and flat all the way. All right, guys, I'm cleaning out this uh, this area right here. And what I wanted to show you about the buildup is this area right in here actually looks like it's part of the assembly. I mean, it's flat, it's smooth. It actually looks like it's like it's part of it. And I found this inside the the uh, air regulator as well. But what I found out, if you take a small screwdriver and you stick it down in here and you pound on it with something kind of light, this stuff will break away. And as you can see, this is like uh, this is like years and years of eating at Golden Corral or something. I mean, this is just terrible. So uh, anyway, all this has got to be cleaned out. So peace. Hey, what's happening, guys? Back here with the FLU 419, day two of the uh, air brake system. Uh, this particular piece right here was the first piece uh, I believe I showed you guys. Uh, it was just completely and absolutely corroded. Um, I mean, you see the diameter of this thing. I'd probably say you couldn't, you could hardly fit the screwdriver down in there. So I want to share with you uh, how I cleaned this out. Um, first of all, I shoved a screwdriver down there to get as much out that I could. Then I took a larger diameter screwdriver, shoved that guy down in there, tried to get as much out as I could. Uh, steel wire brushed the outside, and as you can see here, let me try and get this in focus. You can see right here along this edge, the pitting and rust was so bad that it's actually, you know, damaged the, the metal there. So I can kind of live with that. But the inside of this, I was really concerned to get clean uh, because if there's any kind of stuff inside here, um, it, it's just going to catch more material. So that being said, I could not find my circular file anywhere. And if you look at my bench here, it's probably, you know, there's no doubt why I couldn't find it. <laughs> So anyway, I found some, uh, I think this is like 40 grit uh, sandpaper, and I just cut a, a longer strip than this off. And then what I did was I came along and I kind of shoved my thumb down here in the center, and I kind of folded this a little bit, trying to create like a little V going down there. So it's a little con, so it's a little concaved. So I shoved my thumb down here in the center, and I kept folding this stuff over until I could get a nice curve to it all. And once I did that, I simply took a long strip while it was in the vise, shoved it down through here, reamed it back and forth completely around to get the bulk of it out. Then I took this stuff in here, this stuff in here, this is uh, what I use for the inside filter. Uh, saturated that with some good old PB blaster this stuff is awesome, sort of like WD-40 on crack. If you've never used it, it's it's amazing. Uh, shoved that down in there, soaked this guy, ran it back and forth as much as I could. And I'll show you what the result is here. Let me loosen that up just a little bit. 
So now, take a gander down inside there. There's still a little bit of material down there. I'll try and get some brake cleaner down there to get some of that stuff out, but it's, uh, it's a thousand times better than what it used to be, and I mean it was bad. Just completely and absolutely corroded. So anyway, guys, there we go. I will keep uh, filming this on the reassembly, and uh, hopefully we'll have you some... Uh, some stuff here. Peace. All right, guys, here we go with the reassembly. As I indicated earlier, this piece right here has a spring under it that's under tremendous pressure. This, uh, this clip right here, I actually found it way up there in the ledge, like up near the light. It had bounced up that high, so here I was climbing up on top of the bench. Anyway, make a long story short, I believe this is a six inch vise. And uh, it's kind of pushing it because by the time you extend everything out, um, you can't get your vise to thread again. So what you got to do is put a little bit of pressure on this guy, wedge in another block of wood because I don't want to mar these guys up. Make sure that you have your clip on here first because obviously if you get it in the vise, this isn't going to go around there. Uh, once she's in there, um, I believe the backside feeds in first. It looks like I've got... A seat all the way around don't want to compress it in too much just enough to kind of get this clip on there uh, don't want to damage anything so anyway definitely wanted to share that because it took me a little while to figure that out anyway peace hey guys I want to share this with you too um, the tool that I have uh, to compress this particular clip it uh, doesn't have enough butt behind it. So that being said, uh, while I work on this, I went ahead and took some electrical tape and I just kind of taped it around because that way, in case this guy springs off again, I don't want to spend, you know, four hours looking for it. So I'm going to try and devise some method to get these clips back in there. If I got one down, it's not that big of a concern. I, I'm pretty confident I can get the other one down. But with both of them being up like this, I'm running a pretty big risk of this guy popping back out of there. So, I want to share that with you. All right, guys, here we go with the FLU 419-1989. This stuff is finally clean, uh, pretty much 99% reassembled. Still got to put the cover back on here in the spring and the plunger. Uh, I want to pick up some new Allens for this. Uh, some things I wanted to uh, share with you regarding reassembly uh, one all my gaskets I'm going to point at these with the screwdriver here all my gaskets down in this area were just ate up uh, so I just replaced those with uh, I don't know whatever gaskets I could find to fit uh, all these guys were froze up uh, PB blaster let it soak for a while a lot of torquing this assembly right here was pretty interesting if I read the manual correctly, uh, O is supposed to stand for open, right? But actually, the drainage of the alcohol fluid, or in this case, carb cleaner, only occurred when I had this guy in the eye setting, which I thought was very interesting. Uh, however, this guy functions, uh, best I can tell, a lot like a carburetor. You got ports and stuff along the side here. Tiny, tiny holes. Uh, down in here, which I had to clean out with some uh, copper wire. Um, this entire system was contaminated with just unbelievable stuff. And from what I could tell, this particular vehicle had a hose bib, a hose attachment going here up to the alcohol reservoir. And the alcohol reservoir was actually uh, cracked. And I believe this guy sat... In the open position which created a vacuum so it sucked in water sand dirt everything else it was so contaminated I mean even even these connectors here uh, I mean I cleaned them out but they were just totally totally encased um, I mean just plugged completely full um, I did check the line uh, going to the other side of the mog to the tanks. The line appeared fine. However, the couplers on the opposite side near the tanks were also uh, clogged up. 
So uh, this is pretty much it. I gotta swing up the hardware store, pick up a couple more bolts for here. I uh, got my homemade hillbilly alcohol container. Uh, if you guys haven't seen that, check out another video. Uh, so I should be ready to uh, post this. Uh, one last tip, I cannot figure out how to get this guy out to clean this upper assembly, nor could I get the screen out. Uh, so what I did was I uh, let this soak in a bath for a while, in a car bath, and then while the fluid was up here, I just kept rocking this guy back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, also used some PB Blaster, and as you turned it, I could feel the sand and grit just working. So I kept working it out, working it out, working it out. And about the same time that all the sand and grit feeling left, all of a sudden fluid started to drain out of here. So I think that's a good sign. Uh, one other tip. Uh, I was hit a moron moment when I took this off. Uh, this particular screw right here is spring-loaded. There's a pretty decent-sized spring up under here. And I left this guy in the down position when I took it off, had it in the vise, did all my creative Appalachian engineering, when all you had to do was unscrew this and take the tension off the spring. Yeah. So, anyway, nice uh, male moment there. Uh, so, anyway, uh, put this back on with the impact, just barely tapped it on there. Uh, the body of the vehicle goes right here. This nut goes from the inside. Then my couplings go up to my hose here, and that goes over to the tank. These guys, I don't have tools big enough to fit these, so I'm going to have to use a crescent wrench. Um, this guy right here was severely corroded. I mean, really, really bad. Uh, now, I checked the other side of the vehicle, and they have rubber caps on these. And those guys look like they're brand new. Just came off the showroom floor. Uh, but to give you an idea of some of the... Uh, some of the gaskets that were on there. They kind of look like this before I took them out. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> kind of is what it is. Um, so anyway, got those guys out of there. I think I've replaced two or three of them. Uh, I think I also replaced the gasket on this guy. Uh, it's kind of a tight fit. I don't plan on using that that too often. Uh, the other thing I did was I put some uh, grease on the inside of this guy. And that's pretty much it, guys. This guy took forever. Uh, it was my first time. Uh, I don't think I ever want to do this again. <laughs> but I will be happy to have uh, air brakes back on the mall. So anyway... Uh, there's a FLU 419. And I forget the other part numbers that it may go under. Uh, to let you know, this is a Bosch right here. And the brand name on this is a Wabco. Looks like maybe a 1011, 111, 1994, I think it is. 932. Trying to read the numbers here. 9320020000. Yeah. So anyway, there you go. And uh, I promise next time I do a video, I will try and have the uh, barn cleaned up because obviously you can see one project led to another project, which led to another project, which I worked out a little bit down there. See, got bored. And then that led to another project, which led another project <laughs> anyway uh hey penny saved for the kingdom is a penny earned and uh, i know cleanliness is next to godliness so apparently god is not going to be too close to this barn <laughs> anyway peace <laughs>uh, this is coming from the air tank side of the Unimog. And, uh, anyway. hey, what's happening, guys? This is the uh, T adapter from the, uh, come on. Sorry about the focus here, guys. I'm trying. This is from the air tank side 
of the Unimog, uh, there was a compression fitting on here. And this guy was seized on there so bad I had to put vice grips on it and then hammer it from the backside to get this thing off finally. So, as I look down inside here, let's see if I can get a focus on, on this. Yeah, this is not nearly as bad as the side where the air regulator was. Now keep in mind that this has been soaking in a carb cleaner for probably five hours. And it's still pretty, pretty hard. So I'm going to have to clean these guys out. But I wanted to show you this uh, so you can definitely check the side where the uh, where the air tanks are I would assume that the airlines coming back out of the air tanks are probably not this bad uh, I'll check those but I don't believe they are anyway be sure to clean all these